two spotted hyenas. Uh, Ascari on the left is the male and Ruckus is our female. They are a female dominated species, so if Ruckus wants something, she's going to get it. Uh, so I like to kind of separate food, uh, separate bones, so that she has to go find hers first, and that gives Ascari time to find the other one. Yeah, these are knuckle bones from a cow. It's to simulate what they would experience in the wild. Um, hyenas are actually able to eat all parts of the body except for hooves, hair, and horns. So they actually would eat bones out of whatever animal that they've caught as well. And another fun fact about hyenas is that they actually are very successful hunters and they typically are able to catch 95% of their prey. That's a good success rate. <laughs> it is. It's very high. They have a higher success rate than lions. So will they then actually eat everything of that bone? Yep, I will come here in the morning to service the exhibit and there will be no bone left. We are actually recommended by the SSP or the Species Survival Plan for these two to breed. Uh, so hopefully in the future we will have some successful cubs. These are Cape Port porcupines, so they're native to the southern regions in Africa. Um, they are the largest species of porcupine, and um, they are actually rodents, um, so their teeth are continuously growing just like all other rodents, so that's why we like to give them lots of different stuff to chew on to help keep their teeth down to a good level. The one up on the rock is our female stompers, and then the one down on the ground is our male bossy. Right now they are working on some ice treats. Um, they have some broccoli in them, so every day we'll give them some ice treats with their produce frozen in there, so they'll get different fruits and veggies. And then we also have a lot of browse out here for them to chew on. In the wild, if they're kind of low in calcium, they will actually eat bones. Um, so sometimes here for enrichment, we will give them antlers to chew on. I just love how curious they are, and yeah, how they're, whenever we kind of give them stuff to chew on, they're very active and inquisitive. They are nocturnal, so usually they will be spending a lot of the day sleeping. Um, when guests are visiting, um, unless we have given them some enrichment to work on. We actually have two troops of mongoose. These are our younger guys, and we gave them some mixed nuts today. It's one of their all-time favorite enrichment items, as you can see. They're really just having a ball, grabbing them, chucking them behind their legs, and breaking them to get to all the tasty parts. Uh, in the wild, they'll do this, um, but they'll do it more with things like eggs and snails, other hard-shelled things. So when they're throwing the shells, it's, that's their nutcracker, basically. Yeah, yeah, and that's a natural behavior. We have Big Mama Karanga in here, and everyone else is her kids. She's in charge. If she wants something, she's gonna go get it. And so when the kids manage to grab something, they'll run off and hide from her and eat it as fast as they can. In the wild, these guys spend most of their day foraging, and so we give them all sorts of fun things uh, to sort of help elicit that behavior. And then throughout the day, we'll give them other things like mealworms. We'll throw it in their red rock here and they'll go digging for it. Uh, they never know exactly when they're gonna get their mealworm, so they have to check everything every single time. Banded mongoose specifically are one of the more social mongoose species. In the wild, they'll live anywhere in groups from five to up to 50 individuals. During the day when it's sunny, and they've eaten and they're tired, uh, they're usually all in one big snuggle puddle. Uh, and then their bands are meant for um, camouflage. And they also have incredibly fast reflexes. As the snake strikes at them, they're usually fast enough to get away. Their closest relative at this zoo actually is the hyenas. They are very fun, quirky fellas.